The world has yet to see what God can do with a person who is wholly consecrated to him. D.L. Moody said he wanted to be that person. Whatever our past, God wants to transform it into, quote, a promise-filled present and future. Hmm. That's what Grace Fox says in her review of Sand to Pearls by Heidi McLaughlin. She's here again from West Kelowna, BC. And we're thrilled to have the founder, the woman who directs a ministry called Heart Connections. And Heidi, I think we're going to get a passionate push uh, in these few moments because your byline says, I've got something to do with this reality, making bold choices to enrich your life. That's my part. Uh -huh. Bold choices. We need to make some bold choices these days, Myra, if we want to get beyond our present reality, which is really tough for a lot of us these days. Well, part of your motivation, <clears throat> I think, re is revealed in the dedication page. Yeah. To my pearls, you evoke priceless laughter and adventure simply by letting me be your nana. Always know that your choices have the power mm -hmm. to unleash your God-given dreams. How many grandchildren we got listed here? Nine. <laughs> Nine? <laughs> yes. Bless yeah. you. You are blessed. I am very blessed. And I know that every day as well. And I pray that so many other women would know how blessed they are in their own life, wherever they're at. And you're concerned about the future for these young lives in a world where they are offered so many dangerous choices. I absolutely am, and that's why I wrote that book, Myra, because as I speak to women across Canada, I see the struggles and the pain that we are in and how hard it is to get out of that. And yet the title of that book, Santa Pearls, is precisely what I believe with all of my heart is if God can take a gritty piece of sand that ended up in the wrong place in the bottom of the ocean, imagine what he can do with you and I mm -hmm. in the image of God with all the potential that we have to transform whatever it is in our lives into something beautiful, no matter where we're at. Just mm. attended a uh, prom. I wasn't actually at the prom. The parents were only allowed to stay long enough to see some pictures. Mm -hmm. And then you get the evil eye, like, Mom, it's time, time to, to go. <laughs> yeah. And I just, uh, my husband has been messaging uh, someone's famous quote, the instant is awful. And it ties very much to, to the kind of headlines we've been seeing. Um, these are two uh, familiar faces, I'm sure. Who are we looking over here? Uh, two men who made more than one poor choice. Uh, I'm sure a series that, you know, it becomes a lifestyle that, that takes you out. And I, I just, uh, w one of the comments about Dominique Strauss-Kahn, extraordinary talent wedded to a fatal flaw. Extraordinary talent wedded to a fatal mm. flaw. Yeah. If we don't deal with some of our choices early, we become entrenched and it becomes very difficult then. Not impossible, yeah. but difficult to get on a path that leads to life. Exactly, but as Christians, we have the power of that. And you see, we're all pulling towards that, that reality that's going to give us that pleasure that we so desperately need in the future. And it's so hard to push beyond that present reality because we're afraid of that pain, what's on the other side. And so we get stuck in that present reality that's giving us that, that momentary pleasure or kick that we also desperately need. And so then, then hard to push beyond that pain. But what we then live with, Myra, is that the regrets, oh, mm. the regrets. And one of those chapters in there is on how we then have to deal with regrets. But even God can then take those regrets that we have lived with and he can still transform those, which is the beautiful part of the Santa Pearls process. Well, just looking at you, Nana, we can yeah. tell that you're no prude. Uh, and page 117, you may, it's a, God created us for pleasure. He did. He did. And it's, it actually says in the Bible, God created us for pleasure. And Myra, you and I, our greatest joy in life is to feel pleasure. And God has given us those feelings to enjoy them. And there's so much pleasure. Yet, you know, anything good, too far, turns bad, doesn't it? And so then we get caught up in the pleasure trap. Well, there's level ground here, right at the uh, get-go. You say, we're all a little bit sandy, mm. a little bit gritty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, where's your starting place in 
the pearl potential. The greediness, I think the deepest greediness that we live in is the, is our regrets that things that have happened in our life or the greediness of being stuck in a, in a, in a bad more, in a bad uh, marriage and afraid to get out. The greediness of our past secrets, mm -hmm. the greediness of our bad choices, Moira. And of course the, the root oh, of all of that is our sin nature. Absolutely. Which, um, is true grit. <laughs> True grit and the, day to, it. and the day to day grit in our shoes of the resentment that we carry around. Mm -hmm. And that turns into anger and bitterness, which destroys relationships and marriages. And, and that, is, that is the daily grittiness. It's like a grain of sand in our shoes that just grinds at us day after day after day. And before we know it, a marriage is ruined or a, or a relationship is, is destroyed. You do go right for the heart uh, uh, throughout the book. Um, I'm looking for one chapter, oh here it is, comparing Ooh. or contentment, an ugly slow burn. Yes. Can anyone relate, I wonder, <laughs> watching today? The ugly slow burn that we women struggle with. I'm just going to talk about women right now because I know that men do as well. But women, we, it, when we look at someone else and say, God, you haven't given me what I need in my life. I need that which is better. I want that. And that is that robs us, Moira, of our discontentment. It robs us of our peace. It keeps us away at, awake at night, just gnawing at us. And it says, God, how come you have blessed that person and you haven't blessed me? And it destroys mm -hmm. our day-to-day -day contentment. And yet the Bible says that we have to learn to be content. And that's, again, making really hard choices to say, I will not be jealous. God has given me everything for my life that I need today. And to learn to live with that. Godliness with contentment is yes. great gain. Charles Dickens put it this way. I love that you've included quotes. Yeah. Cheerfulness and contentment are great beautifiers and are famous preservers of youthful looks. Is Hold the, the Botox. You, you, just contentment and cheerfulness. <laughs> going to do more for you. Well, you know a woman when she walks in the room, you can tell if she's content, can't you? There's just a radiance about her. There's a, a and a, she exudes a joy, a peacefulness that just kind of draws us in like a magnet. Mm -hmm. And that isn't something that happens naturally. That, that's, that means that some grittiness in our life has, has gone and God has filled us with his love and with his Holy Spirit to give us that contentment. We learn to do that one choice at a time. What about you, Heidi? I mean, yeah. you've been doing this for, I've sat under your teaching and, and seen how women respond to your encouragement to help them become all they were meant to be. Mm -hmm. Has this been a, a journey with some of these challenges for you? In my personal life, yeah. absolutely. And especially 2010 was a year of a lot of grittiness. We all deal with it, but then to know that God has given me the power every day, one step at a time, to get beyond that. Last year was a year where we had family health issues in our family. We experienced for the first time a divorce in our family. And those are all really hard things and it just grinds away day after day. And so I have a choice every day, Mara, when I get up in the morning and say, how am I going to deal with this day? And I so cling to Psalm 5-3 where it says, In the morning, O Lord, hear my prayer. And I lay it before you and wait with expectation as you work it out. Okay. Well, you have the additional pressure, and I haven't shared this yet, but you are married to Pastor Jack. Yes, I am. You're a pastor's yeah. wife. Yeah. That's a fishbowl of a very unique kind. Um, you're kind of expected to have it all together all the time. Myra, the women that know me, know me as I am. And I cannot pretend to have it all together. I am who I am. And that's part of the beauty of making bold choices to decide I'm going to be who I am. And uh, just to be okay with that. And just, is there anything more beautiful than a woman who is authentic? and that you can talk to. And if she's struggling, and, and it's when we begin to share our struggles that women are really drawn into our lives. Don't you believe that? Mm -hmm. When we are really real with each other and say, this is really hard. Women but then are gifted they, with intimacy. We and then, then come they- Come alive when we share our hearts. Absolutely, and then, but then they wanna know how are you getting through it? And how are you getting beyond this? This is where we really start to connect with each other. And help one another. Yes, that's right. In your own Annas Horribilis. <laughs> 2010. Yes. What did you learn about God that you didn't know before? What, what treasures of darkness did you mine out of a year you wouldn't have chosen? 
it was a hard year, but I we love that verse in Ephesians 3:19 where it says or 3:20 where it says now glory to be to God who by his mighty power within us has given us more than we can ever hope or dream and we love that cuz we want God to do great things in our lives, don't we? Mm -hmm. Just things that bless us and to open doors and give us accomplishments and victory. And during the darkness of 2010, some of those periods, I found that God is with me beyond in my pain as well. Mm -hmm. Where I wanted to be in the beyond in my blessings, He was walking with me in the beyond in my pain. And that was so clear in the night when you wake up, what do you cling on to? What I hung on to God's promises. And that was the beyond in the pain where I just hung on to, it, it was His promises, His word. Mm -hmm. I, I just immediately it pops into my mind. You know, you you have these treasures of testimony and life examples that they're just part of who you are. They mm -hmm. just stay with you. And I, I will never forget Corey Ten Boom yeah. talking about her time in the German concentration camp. And she said, never before that time and never since had she heard God's voice so clearly mm. or felt his presence so near absolutely true and I think we find that I find that at three o'clock in the morning when you wake up and everything's dark and big isn't it and then then I run to the verse Jeremiah 29 11 for I know for I know the plans I have for you and then Deuteronomy where it says that all God's deeds are fair and just and I need to know that whatever swirling is around me even though it looks unfair in the present reality God's deeds are always fair and just no matter what and I cling to that.